A growing number of counties now offer mental health diversion courts. And while there are incredible success stories, there are also concerns about who's now eligible to get treatment instead of facing charges for their crimes. CBS News California found there is no reliable statewide data to determine who is most successful and how many people fail or commit new crimes. And the policymakers have called on us to do something different than we've traditionally done. And each and every day, you all serve as shining examples. It's graduation day in Judge Larry Brown's mental health court. Ah, oh, Caesar. How are you, my friend? I'm doing good, Judge. Oh, I love the smile. Folks, um, Caesar's been with our court uh, since February of last year. I was homeless. Nothing would stop me from getting high. And charged with a, an assault uh, felony case. The day I got arrested, I had smoked a, a batch of some crystal meth, but I didn't know it was laced with fentanyl. It made me go crazy. I started attacking people. And Caesar, are you proud of yourself today? I realized that I messed up and I could have hurt somebody. He attended all his treatment appointments. It makes me feel ashamed of myself. Sacramento County has been running this mental health treatment court for over a decade. I got a second chance in life. For people like Caesar, after they're convicted and have served time. Promise you're going to keep doing everything you've been doing? Yes, sir, I promise. Now that he's completed the program, his convictions are raised. Case dismissed. Congratulations. In 2019, lawmakers expanded the system to include a new pretrial mental health diversion track, where defendants who could prove a diagnosed mental disorder caused them to commit a crime could have their charges dropped before they're ever convicted if they complete a 12 to 18 month program with regular drug tests, treatment and court appearances. 41 counties, including L.A., Riverside, San Bernardino and Orange County, currently offer some version of adult mental health court. A Caesar is the type of person mental health court is intended to help. The bar for entering mental health diversion is actually quite low. They're not uh, all success stories. It. Folks that shouldn't be in there because they do pose a threat to public safety are getting admitted. Assistant Chief Deputy DA Rochelle Beardsley points to Fernando Jimenez. Court records reveal he was charged with violently attacking his neighbor, breaking the woman's orbital socket. But because she survived, instead of going to jail, he got diversion. He was in mental health diversion when he committed a murder. Jimenez is now facing murder charges in a neighboring county. It's not what it used to be, man. She says Jimenez got diversion instead of jail thanks to a newly revised law that makes more people eligible. Defendants no longer have to prove their mental illness is related to the crime. In fact, they can blame nearly any crime on any one of these hundreds of listed mental disorders, including ADHD, erectile disorder, bulimia, anorexia, substance use disorder. And while people charged with sex crimes and murder aren't eligible, if their victim survives, attempted murder, domestic violence, those are eligible for mental health diversions. Get this. Remember this story. A Tesla flies off Highway 1 over a cliff. The CHP now says the man drove his family off that cliff on purpose. So they did arrest him for attempted murder and child abuse. This is nothing short of a miracle today that they survived. Because this Pasadena doctor says he suffers from depression and his wife and two young kids survived the plunge, he's now asking for mental health diversion instead of prosecution for attempted murder and child abuse. There are limited ways for a DA's office to oppose it. So how successful is mental health court? Well, that depends on who you ask. We compiled success rate data from counties across the state, comparing it to the public data on the state's dashboard. And we found it was inaccurate, incomplete, or non-existent. In fact, no one seems to be tracking who's most successful or how often people reoffend. But the public data we do have indicates in the first quarter of this year, success rates fell below 50%. Proud of you, my friend. Thank you, sir. Even if they don't make it all the way through. After presiding over mental health court for more than a decade. We've had success for that window of time. Judge Brown has a different view of success. It's success the moment we connect them to a mental health provider. It's success when we get them on medication while they're in jail. He says he sees roughly 200 people a week who he gets to know through regular check-ins. Like Caesar, uh -huh. we're li truly going to miss him. He's a delight and he's been a gentleman. So that's what's great about this job. And I thank God that he locked me up because I'm sober now. Congratulations, Caesar. Caesar's story is a powerful example. I didn't know another life. 
until I got arrested. Of the potential. And I quit cold turkey. Of California's mental health court. I found the Lord. Now I'm sober. Now I see the life of a sober man. Now I see how a, a real man feels. But without better statewide data to show what's working and what's not. Being arrested saved my life. For now, Caesar's story my is an anecdote with great my... potential. I mean, when you see tents like this. It brings me back. It, it brings me back, but it's not going to stop me from, from continuing my new life that I have. Yeah. Because nothing can stop me no more. Bottom line, we simply don't know how many Caesars there are. But a small case study of Sacramento's court prior to this new pretrial diversion program found that graduates like Caesar, who entered treatment after they were convicted and had already served time, were 25% less likely to be rearrested and 75% less likely to be rehospitalized. Julie Watts, KCAL News.